So one of the largest problems that people have to deal with is losing traction. So you put your foot down and the car doesn't lurch forward immediately. It scrabbles to get some grip. And then when it's got the grip, you can then feel the car under pace and it really starts to get going. So we're going to look at the problem of traction, particularly off the line traction, and look at some of the mods and upgrades and things that you can do to mitigate traction issues. And this is a particular problem on front wheel drive cars. So with front wheel drive cars, typically around 200, 250, horsepower you start to get fairly significant traction issues and that can actually cause the car to veer from side to side as the torque starts varying between the driven wheels at the front and it can really slow up your progress and you may well get your car to the point where you've tuned it and you can't enjoy that extra power just because you're experiencing traction issues so we're going to look at some of the obvious fixes and some of the solutions that you can apply to your tuning project just to make sure you avoid those traction problems in the first place so obviously if you've got a four-wheel drive car or a rear-wheel drive car traction issues are less of a problem with rear-wheel drive cars the rear wheels are pushed into the ground as the car lurches forward which actually improves grip so you'll get significantly better traction on a rear-wheel drive car than you would on a front-wheel drive car but in the wet things start to get really really crazy and really hairy and if there's no grip there you just will struggle to get the power down so certainly as a driver you need to be aware of where the traction is and if you're starting to lose traction, just easing off a little bit on the throttle will help you to pick up the pace more quickly. But is there anything you can actually do as a driver to your car physically, any mods that you can apply that will improve the traction? Well, obviously the rubber that you use on the tires of your car will make a significant difference to the grip that you get. And changing the compound, the tread pattern, and even the dimensions of the tire can have a significant change in the way the car is able to put power down. I've actually had cars that have been absolutely terrible to drive, but when I've gone out and invested in a decent set of tires, it really has transformed them and turned them into a sheer pleasure to drive. So think very carefully about the tire. If finances allow, Make sure your tire is tailored to the season that you're in. If you're driving in summer tires and it's summer and you can pretty much guarantee the roads are quite dry, then you will make fairly swift progress. But you put those same tires in wet conditions and you will really start to lose traction. And conversely, if you get a wet weather tire, a winter tire, and you start using that in the summer, you're going to be significantly down on power. Now, don't be fooled that an all season tire is good in all seasons. It's not. It's better in all seasons on the average than the other tires but a summer tire will always be much better in the summertime and a winter tire will always be much better in winter time so the all season tire just brings that average down so you've got a tire that performs reasonably well in all seasons but it really won't shine and stand out as a significant performance enhancing tire on other conditions so wider wheels will they give you better traction and better grip well they certainly will in the dry changing the contact patch and the contact area of your tire will always have a significant change in the way you're able to put power down but you will notice that wider tires are often more prone to aquaplane they're not as good at dispelling the water that builds up under them so the region you've got that provides grip the tread contact patch is sometimes much much reduced on a wider tire where you've got wet conditions and they're really scrabbling to get that water away so think as well about the the size and the shape of the tire because that certainly does have a bearing and something that works really well on dry weather and track conditions is not always ideal on the road so you do have to be very very careful but other than just tires which is a fairly obvious upgrade think too about the differential now the differential sits between the axles and it just makes sure that the wheels get correct amount of power if both the wheels were connected and turned at the same rate you would have problems every time you cornered the wheel that is taking the furthest path around the corner will need to rotate more than the tire on the inside so if they're fixed and they work at the same rate you're going to have all sorts of problems so you'll notice on drift cars they weld up the rear axle to create that instability to enable them to get the back out and to prolong a drift so in a, a conventional car a front wheel drive car from the factory the differential will send the power to the wheel that is spinning fastest so if you're turning to the right the outside left tire will be traveling at a faster rate than the inside tire 
and that's good it, it works well but if you lost traction for example if that front left tire was on ice and it was just freely spinning the differential would send all of the power to that wheel that had no grip because it is spinning more freely and that's the problem that you have with most stock factory differentials they don't use any intelligence they will send the power to the wheel that is spinning the most freely so upgrading the diff getting a torque sensing diff will apportion the power that you're putting down and just make sure that you are still able to make progress on the road so it can also help to minimize torque steer to a certain extent but a lot of torque steer is actually created by the angles of the suspension geometry and where it sits in relation to the hub within the wheel itself so the actual design of the wheel itself can have quite a bearing on whether you suffer from torque steer which is where the car veers from left to right and on some cars like the Honda Type R for example which is front wheel drive has a phenomenal amount of power the engineers have put a lot of thought into the way that the differential and the hubs are designed just to make sure that they've minimized the torque steer that you would get and you're always able to put the traction down on the road and and some hot hatches come with really nice differential setup that's borne out when you take these cars on the track and they outperform thoroughbred sports cars back from the 80s and from the 90s and you've basically got a family car there that is turning in lap times faster than these prestige cars just because it's got a nicely designed differential and modern tires are coming into play as well with all the advancements that they've made in the design of tires so can you convert a front wheel drive car to rear wheel drive well you can that's a top for another video it's an extremely complex thing to do and it's certainly not something I would recommend to most users but it is possible there are some shortcuts that enable you to achieve that we've got an article on our website that deals with conversion to rear wheel drive and conversion to all wheel drive and some quicker paths that you can take to that so if that's something that interests you please check out that article as well so a lot of cars also have a traction control system that is designed to stop the wheels from spinning but generally they will just apply the brakes to do so so if a wheel is Slipping, the brake will be applied to slow it up and in a lot of cases that actually hampers your progress forward as the brakes just keep cutting in and it can create really violent effects as you're driving the car so a lot of the factory traction control systems leave a lot to be desired if you want to drive your car in a performance environment particularly taking it out on the track and for most proper drivers it's worth turning off the traction control system when you're in those conditions where you want the maximum amount of performance from your car and you You'll adjust the throttle yourself and just make sure that the power is going down as you need it to so i hope this video has been useful to you you've learned a little bit about traction control and how to improve traction off the line we'd love you to stay tuned so please boot that like button it helps us to get out there and subscribe if you haven't done so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video